All right. So, got the master key system. We are going to start by reading Charles of Fano biography, and then we are going to read the foreword. And then in our next video, we're going to go ahead and go through part one. So let's begin <clears throat> the master key system. Charles F. Hanel biography. Charles F. Hanel was a noted American author and businessman who belonged to the American Scientific League, the Authors League of America, the American Society of Physical Research, the St. Louis Humane Society, and the St. Louis Chamber of Commer Commerce. Born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Charles F. Hanel began his business career in St. Louis. He resigned his position in order to start his own company and eventually founded one of the largest conglomerates of his time. He wrote several books which were published in St. Louis. Mr. Hanel put into books the ideas and methods he used to gain his success. Besides the master key system, he also wrote Mental Chemistry and The New Psychology. The master key system had sold over 200,000 copies and then seamless, seemingly disappeared. The master key system is one of the finest studies in self-improvement and higher consciousness ever written, covering everything from how to get wealthy to how to get healthy. Mr. Hannah leaves no stone unturned. With precision, he elucidates on each topic with logic and rigor that not only leaves you feeling good, but also thinking good. The rumor has it that while he was attending Harvard University, Bill Gates discovered and read The Master Key System by Charles F. Hanel. It was this book that inspired Bill Gates to drop out of the university and pursue his dream of, quote, a computer on every desktop, end quote. You probably know the results. It is Silicon Valley's secret that almost every entrepreneur who made a fortune in recent years did so by studying the words Mr. Hanel pinned over 80 years ago. Almost every millionaire and billionaire in the Valley read The Master Key System by Charles F. Hanel. Since this book was no longer in print until recently, copies of The Master Key System became a hot commodity in the Valley. The master key system is a system that teaches the ultimate principles, causes, effects, and laws that underlie all attainment and success. When you want to attain something, the master key system will show you how to get it. The results you will attain from using this system are so startling as to appear incredible. For this reason, more and more people are becoming students of the master key system than ever before. In 24 parts, the master key sets out the fundamental principles of life and creative living. As Hanel came to understand and apply them, basic to his teaching is the correct development and use of mental power. The key to truly creative power in action, harmony and health, love and happiness and abundant possibilities. Each part is meant to be studied like a correspondence course lesson, but this is also a book that can be opened at random for whatever gem of advice, gem of advice your eyes happen to fall upon. This age-old wisdom was written by someone who could perceive and tap in the universal mind, but who seems to have no particular, particular allegiance to any specific system of knowledge. Hanel's numbered common sense messages still have a freshness 89 years after they were first assembled. Walter B. Stevens described Mr. Hanel as, quote, a man of mature judgment, capable of taking a calm survey of life and correctly valuing its opportunities, its possibilities, its demands and obligations, end quote. Nature compels us all to move through life. We cannot remain stationary, however much we wished. Every right-thinking person wants not merely to move through life like a sound-producing, 
perambulating plant, but to develop, to improve, and to continue the development mentally to the close of physical life, meaning to grow and develop mentally for the rest of our life, the life that we have here as this human being. This development can occur only through the improvement of the quality of individual thought and the ideals, actions, and conditions that arise as a consequence. Hence, a study of the creative processes of thought and how to apply them is of supreme importance to each one of us. This knowledge is the means whereby the evolution of human life on earth may be hastened and uplifted in the process. Humanity, humanity ardently seeks the truth and explores every avenue to it. In this process, it has produced a special literature, which is new thought, which ranges the whole gamut of thought from the trivial to the sublime, from the divination through all the philosophies to the final lofty truth of the master key. Now, with that being said, in Abel Allen's book, The Message of New Thought, Abel Allen says specifically that new thought is a symbol for growth. It is a growth of the mind because through the process of evolution, we as humans are always developing and evolving mentally, spiritually, and physically. And because of this evolutionary process, this process of nature that's found, it's a natural law. It is a law to grow. One of the issues we have as human beings is the fact that we do have the power of choice. And we can choose whether to grow in consciousness or whether not to grow in consciousness. Because God, the intelligence within us that works through our subconscious mind, keeps developing our body throughout the years. We know as these mortal humans, being in these mortal bodies, our body is aging constantly, regardless of what we think about, whether we think about aging or not. Our body is naturally doing that. So our subconscious goes through this process of age. But we can consciously choose to grow with this natural growth process that we are just that we are just a part of and that is the whole purpose of new thought is to continue to grow in consciousness and expand our thoughts to higher planes of thinking because we know that our behavior is dependent upon the quality of the thoughts that we think and we know that as we continue to push our thoughts to higher planes of understanding um, bringing our mind into subjection to natural law, living by natural principles, our behavior will change and we will live in accordance with these principles, which is exactly what we are here to do. This is exactly what we must do. We must have this, this, this power, this way of thinking to overcome the trials of our life. The master key is here given to the world as a means of tapping the great cosmic intelligence and attracting from it that which corresponds to the ambitions and aspirations of every reader. And that statement gave us a clue about the law of attraction of which we are going to be covering since everything is in vibration and everything is energy. We use our mind to enter into a state of vibration. And we attract those things to us. We resonate on the vibratory level that the material world is made out of. We'll cover more of that as we go along. And as we were saying with New Thought, the ultimate goal of New Thought is teaching that Jesus the Christ, who came here to give us Christ, so the Bible teaches us that Christ is the image of God in man, and Jesus was the perfect representation of the power of God within man. He was completely in tune with the laws of with the laws of God, the laws of the universe. And he set out to teach those laws, to teach that power that exists within us, and to give that to the world. And new thought as its ultimate goal is to bring people to the understanding so they could also say with our 
master with the master teacher that God and I are one God and you are one reader we just need to become aware of it so we can use this understanding and power in our lives because it does say in Christ's own words that we can all do what he did if we just listen and understand <clears throat> so the master key explains and guides the process the master key teaching has hitherto been published in the form of a correspondence course in 24 lessons delivered to students one per week for 24 weeks the reader who now receives the whole 24 parts at one time is warned not to attempt to read the book like a novel but to treat it as a course of study Okay, I have lost where I was, my apologies. And conscientiously to imbibe the meaning of each part, reading and rereading one part only per week before proceeding to the next. Otherwise, the later parts will tend to be misunderstood and the reader's time and money will be wasted. Used as thus instructed, the master key will make of the reader a greater, better personality and equipped with a new power to achieve any worthy personal purpose and a new ability to enjoy life's beauty and wonder. Now that introduction was written by F.H. Burgess. Now we're going to do the forward. Some men seem to attract success, power, wealth, attainment with very little conscious effort. Others conquer with great difficulty. Still others fail altogether to reach their ambitions, desires, and ideals. Why is this so? Why should some men realize their ambitions easily, while others with difficulty, and still others not at all? The cause cannot be physical, else the most perfect men physically would be the most successful. The difference, therefore, must be mental, must be in the mind. Hence, mind must be the creative force. Excuse me, sorry. Must constitute the sole difference between men. It is mind, therefore, which overcomes environment and every other obstacle in the path of men. When the creative power of thought is fully understood, its effects will be seen to be marvelous. But such results cannot be secured without proper application, diligence, and concentration. The student will find that the laws governing in the mental and spiritual world are as fixed and infallible as in the material world. To secure the desired results, then, it is necessary to know the law and to comply with it. A proper compliance with the law will be found to produce the desired result with invariable exactitude. The student who learns that power comes from within, that he is weak only because he has depended on help from outside, and who unhesitatingly throws himself on his own thought, instantly writes himself, stands erect, assumes a dominant attitude, and works miracles. And this is exactly what you and I are here for, to attain. It is evident, therefore, that he who fails to fully investigate and take advantage of the wonderful progress which is being made in this last and greatest science, the science of the mind, the spiritual science, will soon be as far behind the man who fails to keep up with the changes of our society, to grow and to become more will soon be as far behind as the man who would refuse to acknowledge and accept the benefits which have been accrued to mankind through an understanding of the laws of electricity. Of course, mind creates negative conditions just as readily as favorable conditions, and when we consciously or unconsciously visualize every kind of lack, limitation, and discord, 
we create these conditions. This is what many are unconsciously doing all the time. This law, as well as every other law, is no respecter of persons, but it is constant. It is in constant operation and is relentlessly bringing to each individual exactly what he has created. In other words, quote, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, end quote. Abundance, therefore, depends upon a recognition of the laws of abundance and the fact that mind is not only the creator, but the only creator of all there is. Certainly nothing can be more. Certainly nothing can be created before we know that it can be created and then make the proper effort. There is no more electricity in the world today than there was 50 years ago. But until someone recognized the law by which it could be made of service, we received no benefit. Now that the law is understood, practically the whole world is lit by it. So with the law of abundance. It is only those who recognize the law and place themselves in harmony with it who share in its benefits. The scientific spirit now dominates every field of effort. Relations of cause and effect are no longer ignored. The discovery of a region of law marked an epoch in human progress. It eliminated the elements of uncertainty and caprice in men's lives and substituted law, reason, and certitude. Men now understand that for every result, there is an adequate and definite cause. So that when a given result is desired, they seek the condition by which alone this result may be attained. And this condition for seeking the results we attain lies within us. The basis upon which all law rests was discovered by inductive reasoning, which consists of comparing a number of separate instances with one another until the common factor which gives rise to them all is seen. It is this method of study to which the civilized nations owe the greater part of their prosperity and the more valuable part of their knowledge. It has lengthened life. It has mitigated pain. It has spanned rivers, it has brightened the night with the splendor of day, extended the range of vision, accelerated motion, annihilated distance, facilitated intercourse, and enabled men to descend into the sea and into the air. What wonder then that men soon endeavored to extend the blessings of this system of study to their method of thinking, so that when it it became plainly evident that certain results followed a particular method of thinking. It only remained to classify these results. <clears throat> so we are here to change the way that we think. This is, this is method is scientific. They added another is. This method is scientific, and it is the only method by which we shall be permitted to end. Permitted to retain that degree of liberty and freedom, which we have been accustomed to look upon as an inalienable right. It is our right to know and to understand this information and to use it. Because a people is safe at home and in the world only if national preparedness mean such things as growing surplus of health, accumulated efficiency in public and private business of whatever sort, continuous advance in the science and art of acting together, and the increasingly dominant endeavor to make all of these and all other aspects of national development center and revolve about ascending life, single and collective, for which science, art, and ethics furnish guidance and controlling motives.
the master key is based on absolute scientific truth and will unfold the possibilities that lie dormant in the individual and teach how they may be brought into powerful action to increase the person's effective capacity, bringing added energy, discernment, vigor, and mental elasticity. And this system is going to give us a way of thinking that's rooted in natural law that's going to allow us to pull out of the power that's already existing within ourselves to rise above the occasions of life and to bring things, to manifest things in our lives that is our birthright to have. It is our birthright to live in accordance with natural laws. It is our birthright to know the workings of these laws to manifest the desired outcome of this life to manifest who we want to be. <clears throat> the student who gains an understanding of the mental laws which are unfolded will come into the possession of an ability to secure results hitherto undreamed of and rewards hardly to be expressed in words. It explains the correct use of both the receptive and active elements in the mental nature of the mental nature and instructs the student in the recognition of opportunity. It strengthens the will and reasoning powers and teaches the cultivation and best uses of imagination, desire, the emotions, and the intuitional faculty. It gives initiative, tenacity of purpose, wisdom of choice, intelligence, sympathy, and a thorough enjoyment of life on its higher planes. The master key teaches the use of mind power, true mind power, not any of the substitutes and perversions. It has nothing to do with hypnotism, magic, or any of the other or less fascinating deceptions by which many are led to think that something can be had for nothing. The master key cultivates and develops the understanding which will enable you to control the body and thereby the health. It improves and strengthens the memory. It develops insight, the kind of insight which is so rare, the kind which is the distinguishing characteristic of every successful businessman, the kind which enables men to see the possibilities as well as the difficulties in every situation, the kind which enables men to discern opportunity close at hand. For thousands fail to see opportunities almost within their grasp. While they are industriously working with situations which under no possibility can be made to realize any substantial return. No, I'm definitely a victim of that. Not seeing opportunity that's right in front of my face. And even if I did see it, busy with too many other opportunities or options. I mentioned this in my first video of just starting, just starting everything again, just getting out there, talking about the situation I'm in and doing what I need to do to overcome this hole that I got myself in. Because as I said, life is very, very, very hard and difficult. And we have to become better individuals ourselves in order to overcome these difficulties of which we are facing within our life. Because we're not here to be ordinary, right? We are here to be extraordinary. We're here to become more, to become a character, an individual that you just do not see every day. We're here to become something entirely new. The master key develops mental power, which means that others instinctively recognize that you are a person of force, of character, that they want to do what you want them to do. It means that you attract men and things to you, that you are what some people call lucky, that things come your way, that you have come into an understanding of the fundamental laws of nature and have put yourself in harmony with them, that you are in tune with infinity, with infinite, that you understand the law of attraction, the natural laws of growth, 
and the psychological laws on which all advantages in the social and business world rest. Mental power is creative power. It gives you the ability to create for yourself. It does not mean the ability to take something away from somebody else. Nature never does things that way. Nature makes two blades of grass grow where one grew before. And mind power enables men to do the same thing. So what this system is going to give us is the power to create something for ourselves. We do not need what somebody else already has. We are going to be developing the creative power of our mind with the focus and concentration to the extent where we're able to become the person necessary to create our own individual thing. The master key develops insight and sagacity, increased independence, the ability and disposition to be helpful. It destroys distrust, depression, fear, melancholia, and every form of lack, limitation, and weakness, including pain and disease. It awakens buried talents, supplies initiative, force, energy, vitality. It awakens an appreciation, appreciation of the beautiful in art, literature, and science. It has changed the lives of thousands of men and women by substituting definite principles for uncertain and hazy methods and principles for the foundation upon which every system of efficiency must rest. So this system is giving us principles that are based in natural law. It is a system that is created around unchangeable principles because they, these are principles that are created by a power that are greater than ourselves. It is a system that is created around infinite intelligence. There's no real, there's really no other word for it. There is a power that put these universal laws in play before we even came into existence. And we have been given the power with our mind being created in the image of this universal intelligence, God, spirit. Being created in its image, we have the power to partake in the application of universal principles. God has given us the power to use his laws. We just need to attach our mind and our thinking and bring our thinking in congruence with how the laws of the Lord work. <clears throat> Albert Gary, the chairman of the United States Steel Corporation, said, quote, The services of advertisers, advisors, my apologies, instructors, efficiency experts, and successful management are indispensable to most business enterprises of magnitude. But I deem the recognition and adaption, adoption of right principles vastly more importance in quote <clears throat> so this guy albert gary chairman head of a giant steel corporation he's the head honcho and he says himself that he a system to follow that involves the use of our mind is more important than his position in the steel business. Because ultimately, him bringing his mind into congruence with the workings of natural law is most likely what gave him his position in the first place. And it's better to know this, these things. It's better to know this system than just having advisors, instructors, efficiency experts, and successful management. Of course, they're indispensable because he needs these things for the success of his business. But what he needs more for the success of his business is the correct way of thinking. 
because then if his mind is working in congruence with natural law, his behavior, his whole business is going to be created around the workings of natural law. As we are told in the Bible, we must build everything that everything that we build must be built upon solid foundation. And as Charles is telling us throughout this entire opening, that it this foundation rests within our mind, it rests within our thinking process. <clears throat> the master key teaches right principles and suggests methods for making a practical application of the principles in that it differs from every other course of study. It teaches that the only possible value which can attach to any principle is in its application. So what he's saying too, this system is based upon practical methods. It's not based in theory of any kind. He is giving us information that is scientifically proven, and he's also giving us tools to implement these understandings, scientific understandings, into our life. Because remember, it really, it's not so much in knowing something, it's in its application. We have to be able to get our hands and our thoughts upon something that we can legitimately apply in our lives. That's going to be the benefit for us. That's going to legitimately help us become a success in this world that we live in. This is the big reason why school systems have failed our world today. Um, Napoleon Hill actually talks about this in Think and Grow Rich when he goes over specialized knowledge that we have to specialize. General knowledge is not bad, but you can only go so far with general knowledge. Specific knowledge, specified knowledge is more important than general knowledge because when you could specify on something, get specific on something and build upon that thing, and become the best at it, you become irreplaceable. You become somebody that's too hard to replace because you build skill and talent to the extent of mastery that you just, people would want you over somebody else. Because ultimately anybody can do anything that somebody else is capable of doing, right? Everybody could do something. Anybody can fill a position but become somebody that cannot be replaced, specialize in it. And this is specialized knowledge, what we're getting right here. It caters specifically to natural law and the power of our mind. <clears throat> Since it's spiritual and in the mind, we can apply it to any aspect of our life. We can apply it to fitness. We can apply it to business. We can apply it to relationships. We can apply it to anything because it leads back to our thought process. We know we take our thoughts everywhere with us. Many read books, take home study courses, attend lectures all their lives without ever making any progress and demonstrating the value of the principles involved. The master key suggests methods by which the value of the principles taught may be demonstrated and put in actual practice in the daily experience. There is a change in the thought of the world. This change is silently transpiring in our midst. And is more important than any which the world has un undergone since the downfall, downfall of pagan, paganism. Excuse me, sorry. Mr. Wayne just got the hiccups. <clears throat> The present revolution in the opinions of all classes of men, the highest and most cultured of men, as well as, the, as those of the laboring class, stands unparalleled in the history of the world. Science has of late made such vast discoveries, has revealed such an infinity of resources, 
more and more hesitate to affirm certain theories as established and indubitable. Indubitable. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my phone. Oh, man. Your brother here, Mr. Wayne, hit legs yesterday, and we trained them hard. We did hypertrophy squats, both traditional squats and front squats. We did booty raises, because we got to have those glutes, right? We got to have a nice, come on. We got to have a nice ass. I'm just going to put that out there. Leg extensions. What else do we do? Um, stationary reverse lunges with the barbell. And we did 80 pounds on the barbell. We did pyramids from one rep to four reps. <sighs> calf raises, seated calf raises, barbell, standing barbell calf raises. What else do we do? I think that was, that was it. And hip, hip adductors. Got the inner parts of our legs. Our sartorius, targeted our sartorius. And your brother here maxed out the machine that they have. Eight reps, got up to eight reps. So we're still in that range of hypertrophy. And that is very important. So when you heard me get up and I sound like an old man, that is my legs. Um, tomorrow is the second day of after hitting legs. Today we did uh, complete core work. We did the you know, windshield wipers for abdominals. We did oblique work, you know, weighted hanging um, leg lifts. So we did a good amount of core work and back, we hit our back and we did biceps. And we'll keep it short and sweet on the things that we did because this isn't a fitness video. I gotta stay on topic, but it's okay, Wayne, it's okay because even fitness is part of self-development anyway. And the mind and body are connected. We know that the better in shape the body is, the more in shape the mind will be. And we know the more in shape the mind will be, the more our body will be able to express higher ideals within our own behavior. It's amazing how that works. It's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. But going back, I needed to find what this word means. Okay, dictionary. Now, DOMS is delayed onset muscle soreness. Usually after you train a muscle group, two days later, you're gonna be the most sore. Indubitable. 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 That cannot be doubted, patently evident or certain, unquestionable. So, that scientific men more and more hesitate to affirm certain theories as established and indubitable as a final fact, because we are always discovering more. The only thing that can be known to be a fact is what has been tried and true and experimented to be true, because the results are always, they always come the same. They always end up with the same result or to deny certain other theories as absurd or impossible. And so a new civilization is being born. Customs, creeds, and cruelty are passing. Vision, faith, and service are taking their place. The fetters of tradition are being melted off from humanity, and as the dross of materialism is being consumed, thought is being liberated, and truth is rising full before an astonished multitude. The whole world is on the eve of a new consciousness, a new power, 
and a new consciousness, a new power, and a new realization of the resources within the self. They repeated that. The last century saw the most magnificent material progress in history. The present century will produce the greatest progress in mental and spiritual power. Physical science has resolved matter into molecules, molecules into atoms, atoms into energy, and has remained for Sir Ambrose Fleming in an address before the Royal Institution to resolve this energy into mind. So what he just told us right there, everything we see in the material world can be resolved into smaller and smarter, smaller particles, all the way down to atoms, subatomic particles. And behind these particles exists energy. And behind that energy exists a mind, the universal mind, the intelligence of God, the intelligence of the universe, the intelligence of the spirit in which we all live and move and have our being. You're going to hear that many times as we go through the master key system. He says, quote, in its ultimate essence, energy may be incomprehensible by us except as an exhibition, except to be explained of the direct operation of that which we call mind or will, end quote. Let us see what are the most powerful forces in nature. In the mineral world, everything is solid and fixed. In the animal and vegetable kingdom, it is in a state of flux, forever changing, always being created and recreated. In the atmosphere, we find heat, light, and energy. Each realm becomes finer and more spiritual as we pass from the visible to the invisible, from the colors to the fine from the low potentiality to high potentiality. When we reach the invisible, we find energy in its purest and most volatile state. And as the most powerful forces of nature are the invisible forces, so we find that the most powerful forces of man are his invisible forces, his spiritual force. And the only way in which the spiritual force can manifest is through the process of Thinking. Thinking is the only activity which the spirit possesses. And thought is the only product of thinking. <clears throat> and if spirit is all there is, you and I are spiritual beings. It is our processes of thought that... that makes our behavior, that makes our actions, that develops our character. A person is who they are because of how they think. We are who we are because of how we think. Addition and subtraction are therefore spiritual transactions. Reasoning is a spiritual process. Ideas are spiritual conceptions. Questions are spiritual searchlights. Search lights and logic. Argument and philosophy are spiritual machinery. Now, why is this so? Because it all has its center in the mind. And as this man recently said, mind Sir Ambrose Fleming, that mind is the power of energy, that the energy itself is mind, it is will. Every thought brings into certain, into action certain physical tissue, parts of the brain, nerve, or muscles. This produces an actual physical change in the construction of the tissue. Therefore, it is only necessary to have a certain number of thoughts on a given subject in order to bring about a complete change in the physical organization of man. Now, in the science of being great, Wallace D. Waddles, and he is going to talk about that too in, this, I believe, the second part of this book, or maybe even part six. But he goes over the brain. Wallace D. Waddles says the same thing about the brain, that 
Our brain is the organ of our conscious mind, that our, our consciousness, our awareness, our spiritual being expresses itself through the brain. And the brain being moldable, malleable, since it's nothing but brain cells, and since everything is in a state of vibration, thought itself, and since spiritual spirit is the basis of matter itself, our mind, our brain is receiving the vibrations of our own thought emanating out of our own awareness, since the awareness is censored, centered in the brain. So we have the ability to change our brain. We have the ability to create the brain in any way that we desire to create it to be. We just have to think upon specific subjects. We have to think in a specific way. And this is why in Think and Grow Rich, when Hill gives us the method for success, he tells us that we have to know exactly what it is that we want. We have to know what we want because when we focus on what we want and we move towards what we want and we think about what we want, we build those neural pathways within our own brain. It becomes part of the body, it becomes subconscious, it becomes a habit, and habits, habits are what the majority is, constitutes the majority of who we are, our behavior. And we have to create new habits. We have to become a new person. And, and in part two, we're gonna go over more about the conscious and the subconscious mind, how we can use our conscious mind to impress and direct the subconscious to create those new habits to become a different person. Mr. Wayne. This is the process by which failure is changed to success. Thoughts of courage, power, inspiration, harmony are substituted for thoughts of failure, despair, lack, limitation, and discord. And as these thoughts take root, the physical tissue is changed. And the individual sees life in a new light. All things have actually passed away. All things have become new. He is born again, this time born of the Spirit. Life has a new meaning for him. He is reconstructed and is filled with joy, confidence, hope, energy. He sees opportunities for success to which he was heretofore blind. He recognizes possibilities which before had no meaning for him. The thoughts of success with which he has been impregnated are radiated to those around him. They in turn help him onward and upward. He attracts to him new and successful associates, and this in turn changes his environment, so that by the simple exercise of thought, a man changes not only himself, but his environment, circumstances, and conditions. You will see, you must see, that we are at the dawn of a new day. The possibilities are so wonderful, so fascinating, so limitless, as to be almost bewildering. A century ago, any man with an aeroplane or even a gatling gun could have annihilated a whole army equipped with the implements of warfare then in use. So it is at present. Any man with the knowledge of the possibilities contained in the master key has an inconceivable advantage over the multitude. And that is the end of forward. Mr. Wayne, this is a documentary. The documentary. 
second chapter of your life. You can talk to you in team. Chapter of your life. It doesn't matter how long this video is. This is for you. You wanted to do something with new thought before you even got into fitness. This was based in spirituality. And you've been using what you've learned in this in everything that you've done. The one thing that you were the best at that's always been with you was fitness. And you know the spiritual information New Thought Millennia I was 22 21, 22 when I thought of New Thought Millennia We must continue it. Really, what the hell else is there to do? Other than fitness. Other than working for somebody else. Spending time, friends, family, yes, you could do that. But really, what else are you going to do? You can go through this, finish the program. Remember, this is a six month program, 24 parts, staying on one part every week. This is training. This is legitimate mental and spiritual training. It's a perfect combination with your physical training. And this is what's going to open the way for you towards something better, something new. Oh, oh my legs. <laughs> oh, you know what that reminded me of? Dave Chappelle. Now, I don't know who doesn't know Dave Chappelle, but the Rick James episode. What am I going to do by my legs, Charlie Murphy? <laughs> you know you can get another couch. I can be very serious, but I do like to have a good time. Let's move on to part one.